fans, it is Connor Christensen here with Adventures in Poor Taste Comics with another iteration of 5 and 5 where I run down the best comics of the week and you get in the comments and tell me whether I'm wrong, right, or just plain dumb. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Kicking off this week's books, we've got Factory Number 1 from Titan Comics, written and drawn by the French artist known as Elgo, aka Yassine Elgori. Elgo is a French comic book artist and animator most known for his work on animated features, specifically one of my childhood favorite films, Titan AE. This is a comic first published in France in 2006 and is being adapted into English by Mark Bourbon Crook. It's another great name. Comic book people have great names. Titan Comics bills it as a Mad Max meets Fallout style storyline, but after reading it, I can tell you it's more of Mad Max meets Fallout meets Jungle Book meets Alice in Wonderland. It's the weirdest book I've read all year, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's definitely some things lost in translation. The writing comes off a little bit stiff, but the art is awesome and totally mesmerizing. It's utterly grotesque. There's not a single pretty, per se, panel the entire time. Almost everything is just gross and hard to look at, and there's fat people ruling over really skinny people in this weird economic class system. It's almost medieval-like in the way that the class works out there. It's based on this planet where everything has gone to shit and they don't really explain what happens and I never really wanted them to. It's just a very weird, totally zany book. It's definitely going to be the weirdest book you read all year, at least up until this point, so it's worth checking out from Titan Comics. It's the week of milestone issues and for Image Comics, Saga is hitting issue number 50. Written by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples, this is a book that has been written by the same creative team since it first started in 2012. 50 issues for any comic book these days, it's a big deal. 50 issues for an independent book is a huge deal. 50 issues for an independent book that doesn't have a movie waiting to be made and doesn't have a TV series being developed like The Walking Dead, that's absolute insanity. This issue is a complete celebration of the series as a whole up until this point that sees Hazel and her parents travel to an unknown planet that is incredibly dangerous and will definitely serve up some adventure for the trio. Over the past six years, readers have watched Hazel grow up right before their eyes, so I'm sure there will be some touching family moments that really celebrate what the book has become and is probably going to bring some tears out of people who've been reading it for a long time. It's a must read for comic book fans and it's just, you know, it's a big issue for, for Image Comics to have something other than, something that's not written by Robert Kirkman really get celebrated and really kick ass, so good on you Image. Well, whether you loved it or hate it, Dark Knight's Metal ends this week with Dark Knight's Metal number 6, written by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. I for one hope that some of the Dark, Dark Knights make it out. The Batman Who Laughs has been an incredible villain. The Red Death was awesome. Those are two that I hope somehow get out of it alive so they continue wreaking havoc on the DC Universe even after Metal concludes. It's going to definitely bring some new shit into the universe. It's going to change some things. I don't expect any huge characters to die outside of characters that were made specifically for this series, but who knows, you might see a huge death come up. Expect dragons, monkeys, alternate timelines. Really zany, quirky, weird shit that Snyder's been throwing into this book since the first issue. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be intense. It's going to blow your mind, hopefully. It's a huge week for DC Comics because not only does Dark Knight's Metal conclude, but Doomsday Clock continues with Doomsday Clock number 4. Written by Jeff Johns with art by Gary Franks, most famous for their awesome Batman Earth 1 story. This issue returns the series after a short hiatus because the two needed more creative time, which honestly there's nothing wrong with that. You'd rather have the team take their time to make a better issue than to rush one out and end up suffering for it. People were understandably reluctant to get excited for this series. I mean, come on, the Watchmen are, it's, it's arguably the greatest comic ever written. It's incredible. And for DC to visit it 30 years later, out of the blue, it was definitely, definitely a, a bad move for some people, especially with how bad before the Watchmen was. But honestly, this story has completely fleshed out the mythos of the Watchmen rather than tarnish it. If you're not happy with the story, at least stay for Gary Frank's art. I mean, the guy is incredible. He's got that classic layout. Everything's very clean, very, very well-constructed panels, and some of the best fight scenes in comics right now. All right, and coming in at number one this week is another milestone, this time by way of Marvel Comics with Daredevil number 600. Written by Charles Sewell with art by Ron Garney, we're at 600 fucking issues of Daredevil. That's incredible. Since his debut in 1964 by way of Stan Lee, Daredevil has been an Avenger, he's been an Offender, he's been a public enemy, he's been everything, and he's now just a mainstay of the Marvel Universe, and despite a god-awful movie with Ben Affleck, he's even got a kick-ass Netflix show right now that if you haven't watched, you have to. It has some of the best choreography in television when it comes to the fight scenes. Charles Sewell, a lawyer himself, has returned Matt Murdock to his more classic roots. This series, since Charles Sewell took over, has focused more on the balance between Matt Murdock the lawyer and Matt Murdock the nighttime vigilante. The epic Mayor Fist storyline concludes in this issue 
with the team up of some of New York City's finest heroes from Moon Knight, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Spider-Man, Misty Knight, Jessica Jones. Basically every big New York City superhero is teaming up to take down Mayor Fisk once and for all. Once again, heavy, heavy, heavy political overtones in this issue. I don't even think Charles Sewell's trying to shy away from the fact that Mayor Fisk is supposed to stand in for Trump right now. So expect Daredevil and his ragtag group of kick-ass heroes to drain the swamp. Just pretty violently. All right, and that wraps it up for this week's 5 and 5. Thanks for watching. I'm Connor Christensen with Adventures in Poor Taste. If I was wrong, feel free to call me out. If I was right, give me some positive reinforcement. Like, hey, Connor, great job. I like the haircut. Thanks. Feels good. Anyway, make sure to subscribe, rate, review, and come back next week for the next 5 and 5.